What's up everyone? I'm here with the blueprint, Matt fucking Morgan. Actually, it's Matt Morgan, but I call him Matt fucking Morgan because he's a beast. So he is seven feet tall. Is that correct? This is correct. Seven, seven feet tall. That's fucking insane. <laughs> and right now you're lean because you just got to come competing, right? Yeah, I just did a men's physique show uh, four weeks ago. So he went from wrestling in the rink to men's physique just nonstop. Yeah. And uh, this is something you kind of always wanted to do, right? You always wanted to get on stage and compete. Yeah. And and, uh, and how was it? Uh, it was a great experience. Uh, yeah. Definitely different than uh, beating people's asses for a living. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> So tell us about your career in wrestling. I know a little bit, but... Yeah. Um, God, 2002, I uh, started with uh, WWE. I was on the SmackDown brand um, that at the time was on every Friday night. Right. I remember. I saw you. Believe it or not, I watched wrestling <laughs> a little bit. A little bit. <laughs> I, and uh, started with them, worked with WWE for about uh, five years. Mm -hmm. um, my contract was up, uh, moved on to a different company called uh, TNA Wrestling. Right. And it's kind of like the old WCW used yep. to be. I think probably everyone out there is totally familiar with TNA. <laughs> that organization. Yeah. It, well, it was cool is right around that time when I was with TNA, I got an opportunity to be uh, on American Gladiators mm -hmm. around 2008, where I played the Beast character. Right. And uh, where well, I was undefeated, by the way. <laughs> the biggest American Gladiator in the history of the damn show. That includes the 80s, 90s, thousands, you name it. Yeah. Um, and how much were you weighing back then? Oh, three, 340. 340. Yeah. <laughs> Shit. Um, but soft looking. Like uh, if you saw me at 340, you'd be like, he don't look 340. If you saw pictures of me. Yeah. Versus... No, you, you look 340. You were a monster. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, to, sorry to disappoint you. You, you look 340. You were fucking huge. <laughs> and that's, that seven feet tall looking huge is uh, pretty unbelievable. And that's what I'm learning with now that I'm totally out of that industry right. of entertainment. And now busting your ass in the gym and trying to get as lean and shredded and cut as so I can. So wrestling was like something you always wanted to do, like growing up as a oh, kid, yeah. like we all watched wrestling and we all wanted to one day be a wrestler, right? I mean, yeah. that was kind of like like our fucking dream. Yeah. I know for me as a little kid, I watched it every fucking, every Friday night That's I watched awesome. the fucking, went to the shows. I think every kid, you know, yep. obsessed about wrestling and would love to be a wrestler one day. Yeah. But you actually, uh, you actually did it. Right place, right time. Where I'm from in uh, Connecticut, mm -hmm. that's where yeah, WWE that's where the, headquarters right, is. Right, right. Met Vince McMahon uh, in, in a gym, ironically, and uh, asked me how tall I was, what I weighed, things like that. And then I asked him, how do I get started? What do I do to become a wrestler? They were doing this reality show on MTV called right, Tough Enough. Right. Winner of this gets a WWE contract. Tore my knee because I was too, way too big. I was like 368 at this point, and looking ugh, not good, no matter what you say. <laughs> I look like crap. Um, yeah, I tore my knee, but they still signed me anyway. I was very, very blessed, very uh, lucky. Yeah. People don't understand how fucking difficult it is to become a wrestler. Like people all my whole life are like, why don't you wrestle? Rich, why don't you wrestle? It's like, you don't just fucking show up and, hey, I want to wrestle. Okay, let's go wrestle, Rich. It's a long fucking road. And for me, at the gym I trained at in LA, like I, I probably had at least 12 personal friends that went, they, they, they quit their job, they said goodbye to their wife for a year. They went to Connecticut and they stayed in the in the WWE training camp for a full year. Mm -hmm. And you don't get paid. They basically pay for your food mm -hmm. and pay for your rent, and that's it. And you're there for a whole year. <laughs> you give the rest of your life goes on hold. And at the end of that year, they were like, "Yeah, all right. See you later. Have a nice life. We're glad you came." And that was it. And yeah. all 12 people that were good friends of mine that were incredible athletes had incredible, you know, physiques. None of those guys made it. Wow. So it just shows that it's, oh, it's so much more difficult than people think. You know, they think you just fucking, oh, I think I'm going to wrestle. And they say, you know, you're on TV. And yeah. No, it's a long fucking road. And it's a million times harder than people realize, you know, it, and the whole, oh, it's fake. It's like, no, let this guy pick you up over his head and slam you on your back. And yeah, you won't see, you'll see that it's not fake. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that shit, it's, it's definitely a, a painful road. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so much respect. How many years did you wrestle? Uh, 13. Fuck. 13. And you survived. I did. And you're actually walking around like you're okay. That, that's what I was just gonna. <laughs> that's what Everyone was gonna, else is fucking fucked up. Walking on games. Yeah, I was just gonna bring that up. Like one of the reasons I ended up retiring semi early. I am 40 now. Was uh, me and my wife finally had our first child about two and a half years ago. And if you're with WWE and you're running full time, you're on the boat five days every week, every month of every year. Yeah. So for 13 years, I would see my wife on a Saturday, half a Sunday, back on the road again. Yeah. Uh, I. 
took us 10 years to have this kid and now we finally have him. I'm not, yeah, it was time Priorities, to get out. man, family. Yeah. That's good. You did your thing and now now you're working on your family. Yeah. And uh, you obviously put money away. Yep. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. So you didn't have to continue wrestling in the little tiny side circuits in your 50s. Right. Like a lot of these guys, you know, I feel awful because these guys were huge on top of the world. Yeah. Fucking stars that, you know, I grew up watching on TV. Like yeah, just, yeah. and now they're, you know, they're still wrestling, you know, and they're always just, it's, 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 it's awful, you know. Yeah. And what's really bad is you go on there and you, you go on YouTube and you look at the wrestlers that passed Oof. and you're like, holy shit. Like, it seems like, like three out of every four guys are gone, yep. you know, in their, in their thirties and forties. And uh, most of the guys I grew up watching are, are, are gone. Yep. And it's, 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 I'd say that as far as sports wise, that's gotta be the, the, the craziest worst sport there is as far as, you know, how long you live and you know, how many injuries you, yeah. acquired throughout your career. You know, I mean, I think it's as, just as bad as football, you know, if not worse. W w one of the things that I have no problem talking about and I'm open, I told you before we did this, I'll always shoot straight from the hip and not sugarcoat shit. Right. Um, I'm an addict, right? Um, I'm, I'll be 10 years recovered this February mm -hmm. uh, from painkillers. And painkillers, steroids, uppers like cocaine, downers like somas for painkillers. Those were things that you, you're on the road five days a week being slammed yeah. on your back for a living. That's normal you everyday need, shit. For, it's a, it's an everyone. easy, right, and it's an easy rationalization to, well, I need these bills or I need to do this so I can maintain my job, right? Because you get paid more to stay on the road versus coming right. off the road right. with an injury. Long story short is I got, I used that as my rationalization, got bit by the, ad, by, by the addiction bug, mm -hmm. hooked on painkillers, put myself through rehab eventually, got clean, sober, uh, wrestled the last, uh, six years of my career, I'd say, uh, sober. Wow, that's pretty fucking amazing. And then went to go. And then thank you. I went to go speak like for police athletic leagues, dare, and tell mm. these kids my story. Right. They might not uh, relate to the painkiller aspect, but they will relate to staying away from other kids uh, and peer pressure and things like that, and showing them that there is a light at the end of the tunnel, no matter how down deep you are. Right. Do you know what I mean? No matter yeah. what your rock bottom is, everyone's just different. I was lucky to catch mine though. Right. Right. I mean, the, the thing is, is I think most people realize, or if they don't, that when it comes to wrestling, like pretty much that, that goes along with wrestling. I mean, it's, yeah. it's, I hate to say, but it's, I find it, it's probably pretty impossible to do what they do without it. I mean, I'm not trying to make excuses, but you know, trying to maintain your physique and then wrestling and practicing all day long and then actually, yep. you know, doing it at night, the event is just so hard on your physique. You yep. know, it's just like constant, just pounding, 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 and it, it, what you're saying is the conundrum that we ha we face. Right. Exactly. What, if you can relate to it already, that shows you how, how real it is. You yeah. got to get up the next morning and work. Right. And you can barely get the fuck out of bed, <laughs> yeah. and you got to go to the gym and start, you know, practicing your your yeah. next fucking match. Yeah. And try to fucking train on top of that, and try to stay in shape because you're you're on TV with your fucking shirt off. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you're in your tidy whities pretty much. Yeah, yeah, so that that's that's some serious pressure. Yeah, and uh, it's 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 fucking crazy, mm -hmm. and it's a crazy sport, and people have no idea what's really involved in that sport. You know, it's uh, people, oh, it's fake and this and that, and oh, Rich, why don't you wrestle? Yeah, it's it's a little more complicated than that. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so big props, but yeah, that's that's uh, it's fucking awesome, and it's awesome that you are in such good fucking health and Thanks, and man. good shape after wrestling for 13 years. Thank you. That's fucking crazy. Yeah, it's, it's different, you know, fun functionality was an important part of being a wrestler too, being able to have muscles that function, Right. Um, not just that aesthetically look good, but now it's strictly, now the, the, what I'm trying to do now with uh, men's physique or classic physique I'm hoping to move up to next year, um, it is all aesthetics, right. right? So now I'm really learning how to dial my diet in and try to look a certain way, and I went from 340 at the beginning of this process, 340 pounds to 285 on stage right and how'd you feel i mean did you like the look did you feel good? love the way i look at photos i was right. just telling uh kayla this i love the way i look at photos but like walking around in my shirts and stuff it, it does play with your mind a little bit put the t-shirt on it's back <laughs> yes you're like fuck this yes. shit you're tired. yes yes and you want to be big again but yeah. yet ironically when you start getting big again you're like oh man i want my abs back again yeah. it's that it's a never ending vicious circle of never being happy, happy. <laughs> because you know, you're never big enough, you're never lean enough, you're yeah. never shredded enough and you know, and that's what keeps us pushing to try to be better. So that's a good thing, you know, but um, it, it's awful because there's so many people out there that look amazing and they're just not content right. with the way they look because you know, there's so much pressure and there's so many other people that look amazing and you know, it's, it's a constant just vicious circle of trying to be the best you can be and you know, it's not so much, the, the worst thing about competing is that 
in any other sport, if you're losing and you're down, you can always come back and win. You know, if you pull deep down inside and you have the heart and you have the determination, you can always come back and win. You know, the sport of bodybuilding, you, you have, there's nothing you can do. You know, if, if you show up and you're not on point that day, you can't fucking get a second wind and say, all right, I'm going to fucking give it all I got. Yeah. You're just standing there like, okay, I'm fucked. <laughs> yeah. so that's the worst thing for me is that, you know, being an athlete in my past, you know, in high school and so forth, you're used to, you know, being able to be like, fuck, this guy's kicking my ass, but you know what? Fuck this shit. I'm going to go in there and just give it all I got. And you can turn it around and beat him, yeah. but not in bodybuilding. You're just like, yeah, okay, I'm fucked. <laughs> I lost. <laughs> You know, and you just stand there and you do. That's the worst part about it, you know, is that's why, it, you know, it's really just a sport preparing for the show. You know, what you yeah. do in the gym and, you know, the training and, you know, the, the determination and, and being able to diet and do cardio and not cheating your diet. That's, you know, that's where the sport is. But when you get on stage, it's out of your hands. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's in the judge's hands. Yeah. So, but, uh, and you're just doing this as some, it's just something fun and something you always wanted to do, right? See, I've always wanted to get on stage. I've always had mad respect for bodybuilders, right? I'm seven foot. I might, at my biggest, 380 is my biggest. Right. But never had the wheels at, at 380. Yeah, you got fucking five foot long legs. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I know bodybuilding could be something I can do, but I could still, you know, compete in other divisions and still scratch that itch that right. I've always wanted to do and get on stage and, right. like I said, scratch that competition itch that yeah. I wanted to do. Like the best you can look. Yeah. But that's awesome. Yeah, that's great. And if you can keep it that way as just a hobby and something you enjoy doing, yeah. it's great. As soon as you start getting all caught up with, you know, this and this and that, it's like, okay. <laughs> I got second place on my show and I'm going to admit, I said thousands and thousands of times, I'm not going to get caught up if I don't, I don't care if I win, <laughs> da, 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 but I'm not going to lie, I got surprised that I got second and it did. For like five minutes there, yeah. it did. I was like, okay, this is a good feeling. But I got to smack myself and remind myself why I'm in it to begin with, like what you said. Yeah, you're trying to be the best you can be. Yeah. You know, and it's all, that's the problem is it's all an opinion, you know. So your opinion of your best might not be someone else's opinion of your best, you right. know, and vice versa. So, you know, you just want to come in looking the best you can look, be the best you can be, and you're competing against yourself. Yep. You know, as far as the other competitors, it's, it's, it's the opinion of other people, you know, mm -hmm. so... You can't, you know, you can't really say that you won or lost because everyone has a different opinion. You know, as long as you are happy with the way you look and you're trying to be the best you can be and you're looking better every time, you know, that's obviously all that matters. You know, uh, but then again, you know, you, you do want to win. Yep. <laughs> yep. <laughs> you have that, that nature inside of you of, of, you know, beating your competition. You know, so it's, uh, you know, and it's... It's a no-win situation because if you win, then you want to come back and keep winning. If you don't win, you want to come back and redeem yourself. Right. So you're constantly, you know, coming back. Right. And, uh, and uh, you know, but uh, keep it a hobby. Keep it fun. And it's all good. Thank you, man. <laughs> yeah, it is. Thank you. Oh, that's awesome. I'm glad, glad to have you on the team. And it's fucking awesome. And uh, it's, uh, when's your next show? Uh, right now is my growth season. So, so hopefully get big enough to get and my wheels big enough and move up to classic men's physique so i'm hoping april yeah cool. april yeah put another put what do you think you're gonna put like maybe 15 20 pounds on i could easily put 40 on <laughs> i'm seven feet though you know what i mean right. it's not people go like, oh, 40 pounds it's yeah, yeah. feet tall people there's a difference yeah yeah it's really not putting 40 pounds on your five foot ten ass it's a big it's difference like five it's, pounds <laughs> right exactly yeah yeah right. awesome cool brother well good talking thank you we're gonna hit a little workout right i don't know what we're gonna do but do some arms. Let's do some arms. Fuck it. Let's do it.